Logic, by its necessity, by its nature, is transcendent. What this means is if you get in a rocket, you go a million years at the speed of light, you get out, and you walk around, whatever. The laws of logic are still valid. They do not depend on where you are or when you are. Therefore, they are transcendent in that they transcend space and time. Second, they're absolute. They don't change. Third, they are by nature conceptual. You don't look under a rock to find them. You don't take a picture of them. You can't weigh them. You think them. They are thought. They're products of the mind. They are of the mind by their nature. This is the nature of what's called logical transcendentals. Okay? No, no problems so far? Yeah, everything you said is consistent with the idea that, that there are models made by humans to reason about the, the universe. If logic, Do you agree with me logic, that, that, that that's, uh, that's the, that you, everything you've said is consistent with that? No, not at all. If the model hmm. is, if you want to say, that, and this is what the atheists say, that basically logical absolutes are products of human minds, the problem with that is human minds are different. And what you think is logical and what I think is logical won't always agree. And but you agree that, that there's an external world out there and that the senses uh, and that the uh, minds are just basically interpreting the things that come through the senses, right? Yes. yes. So in other words, if there's something, if there's a point of reference for two people, I mean like, you know, if there's a table here and Don and I are both seeing this table, uh, then uh, essentially, the fact that the table is a point of reference uh, basically makes us ha is what accounts for us having similar experiences. Yeah, what you're doing is describing the law of identity. Something is what it is and is not what it is not. And you're also okay. doing an epistemological issue with a subcategory of empiricism. How you know things are what they are and that your senses are the things you trust to interpret reality. And we have to use logic in order to get there, because you guys are doing that as well. You're saying, if this, then that, which is logic, deduction. No problem. Yep. Very so good model the of the world, and we actually teach that in schools. When, when <laughs> kids go to school, we actually teach that to them in, in, uh, in college-level classes. The question we have to ask, though, what are the necessary preconditions for transcendental conceptual absolutes? Can an atheist worldview account for I don't for that? believe it's transcendental. Oh, can, so can, you, can you come up with another culture that this, this created the exact same thing? And can you come okay. up with, why, why would you, you, you've made an assumption You're begging that, the question. That, it exists, that it exists everywhere and that it's not just something that, that models reality. Okay, I'm trying and to get past that. a useful that. tool to us. I'm trying you, to get through you, that. Made, hmm? I'm trying to get to that to tell you. Okay, please do. It cannot be the product of human minds, and it cannot be the product of human minds thinking as a tool. And you have to hear me out here. The thing is it's this. It's the product that. of the human minds interacting with, right. with the reality that we see, right? When minds are different, your mind is different than my mind. Since the logical absolutes are themselves absolutes, they cannot be the product of human minds because human minds are different. What you consider to be logically absolute, I may not. If they are the product of human minds, then they would be the product of human chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. There would be no reason to trust right. one. But, but again, they're coming from an external point of reference. Would, would you not, also say that, that uh, you know, a particular atom is transcendent because it's not a pro product <coughs> of the human mind? <laughs> transcendent means that something is not dependent upon space and time for its existence. You guys, I mean, that's, that presupposes yet another model of the world that, that we might agree on. But, but you're building, you're talking about how models interact. You're not talking about... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You guys are. I know, I don't mean this, I know, I do not mean this disrespectfully, but you guys haven't done your homework in these areas philosophically. And I would oh, suggest come on. Come on. You haven't made any, any, any interesting points yet. I'll tell you what, I'll let you talk for a minute and you can make an interesting point. I mean, perhaps you would respect our education if we just listened to you and said, my gosh, that is this right. Is so the transcendental yes. argument is absolute proof for God. I'm sorry that this is frustrating you. Now, what's, what's difficult is actually trying to complete a thought without being interrupted. 
Yeah, you're, you're, you're trying to define God into existence. No, I'm not. You guys yes, you doing. are. <laughs> now, you guys, what you keep doing is inserting into what I'm saying that which I am not saying. All I'm doing is telling you about the nature of what logical absolutes are. They're not dependent upon space and time. You can't find them under rocks. You don't weigh them. They're, yeah, they're we haven't said, said that you can. That way. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Yet they exist. <laughs> All they of exist, physics okay. is observer independent. Boy, so, it, it, it must be, it must be, you know, God must be the observer or something. I don't know. Therefore, you need to find a way to put God in there. Therefore, gentlemen, if logic is not dependent upon space and time, and if it is not something you can find under a rock or weigh or freeze, it is not a property of the universe. Mm -hmm. Logic is not a property of the universe. Okay. If it were a property of the universe, it could be weighed or measured the way gravity can, refraction, <laughs> heat differentiation. Yeah. You guys know this, right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the nature of the logical laws is conceptual. They are also transcendent. They require a transcendent, absolute mind to offer them. Wait a minute. Atheism, yes. <laughs> that was an enormous leap. Where did the word mind come in? Do you ever have a concept without a mind? You have you have an external it, reference without a mind. You remember a minute ago, Don asked if uh, if an atom is transcendent because it's not dependent on a human mind. It exists, and things that exist are not and not dependent upon human minds for their existence can exist independently of the human mind. So it's not an issue of transcendence. Right. So, so, I, so I mean, you, you think our thoughts, the fact that we have thoughts, that means that God exists. Is that is that I what you're say saying? That. I did not say that. Well, that seems to be what you're saying. You seem to be saying that because we have concepts that exist that are not tangible, that that, that, that must be because God exists. That's not what I said at all. Okay. I'll say it again. But I'll because say because two or three people exist, agree on a concept. I should let you know uh, we have only three That's minutes left in the show, and while we'd love to keep talking to you, uh, uh, I'm just giving you a time warning. Okay, thank you. But that's not what I said, though. I said the logical absolutes are themselves transcendent. They are always I, I don't true believe everywhere. it's absolute. I believe it's a model made by humans. And you would need to prove you, that okay, it's a, logic if, is an absolute, and I don't believe you've done that. Okay. If, if you believe that logic is not absolute, logical absolutes are not absolute. I believe that then logic is a wonderful, useful model Gosh, created man. by humans and used by humans. <clears throat> Then I will offer you a sentence if logic is not absolute. Blue sleeps faster than Wednesday. And therefore, because you can't think linearly with going hopscotch backwards, I win the debate. I'm sorry. What? I didn't follow all I that. Didn't, I didn't actually hear what you said. Could you Something say that again, please? Yeah. It doesn't matter, gentlemen, because if you're going to tell me that logic is not absolute, that we have no basis of any rational discourse. <laughs> <laughs> if logic depends upon your mind and depends upon anybody else's mind, or it is relative in that it depends upon some other thing for its validity, then whatever changes that is a necessary precondition for its existence alters the very nature of logic itself. But you will not argue that way, and no one would ever argue that that's the case. Therefore, logic is transcended by nature and is not dependent upon nature or human mind. It is I think what we I think what we've been for. saying along, uh, saying all along, is that logic is something that is descriptive and not prescriptive. I mean, we, essentially, you essentially, on. what it means is that when two people look at something and see things the same way. Uh, it, it is generalized in a way that is described as logical. Well, what you're doing is... That, that doesn't mean that logic is a thing that exists outside of space and time. It just means that Therefore it's essentially, it uh, it's essentially it a, a way of observing things, things in a consistent way. I didn't say it exists outside of space and time. I said it's not dependent upon it for its existence. Okay, Let, let's get back to your mind thing, though. Where did you get to the point where you said that because it's not dependent on space and time, there must be an intelligence outside the universe? 
I didn't say there's an intelligence outside the universe either. Well, I mean, you said basically uh, what, I, I mean, you said that essential thing. That's where you're going with it, right? No, that's, that's what you mean what by said. God, right? <clears throat> no, it's not what I said, and that wasn't where I was going. So you but don't think God is an intelligence outside the universe? He's outside and inside. Okay. Had a false I'm sorry, a false Matt. This has been a great conversation, and I encourage you to call back next week when Matt Dillahunty will be on the air, but we are totally out of time.